G'day, Nathan from Wozaka here, talking about the AutoCAD architecture roof object. Now, I want to quickly look at uh, another situation with a typical gable where you've got uh, a bit of an overhang uh, or an underhang where the roof is uh, supposedly looking at going under itself. Now if we quickly put this, uh, I'm just going to turn that to plumb, if we quickly put a roof on this and we put our at our gables. Uh, we'll do that one, this one first. We get a common situation. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to project my walls up to my roof, and we get a common situation where this looks very easy to construct, but there's a hole here where the roof should be, because the roof object doesn't naturally uh, underhang, overhang itself. So we're going to just delete that. And you know what? We're going to put to one side. And I'll show you something else on that later. So using the technique that I did on this roof on the last video, we're just going to, coming back here, we're going to just stop short. Using my tracking point, I'm going to create an interesting roof here. Now what's happened here is that because I've used overhang, it's got a little bit confused, doesn't always happen, but it didn't want to accept those tight end points. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just give the thing room, or oh, I'm just going to change that to a plum roof. Plum roof is a little bit better than, than a normal roof. But what I'm going to do is well, once I get to this point, I'm just going to change the overhang to zero. Uh, I'm going to put a point there, and then I'm going to use my tracking point to get a point out there. And then I'm going to go back to, what do we have, 300 overhang. All right. And then I'm going to just zoom that. I'm going to create gable end here. You can see I've got some strange things happening here. I'm going to put a gable end there. And what we've got is this little jog. And the idea is that we're going to make that little jog, like we did over here, going to make that jog so small that it's going to be inconsequential. But the other things I have to do is come in here and change these two roofs to 90 to 90 if you've constructed it with eaves and it did actually work you can come in and change the overhang to zero because it's not actually supposed to be doing anything and what happens here is we can come back and we can give this our overhang and voila you can see that the roof is doing something very interesting before we have a look at it i would generally take this and stretch it to here. Now if, if I take it past that point, sometimes this plane will fail. If I try and match it exactly, this plane will fail. So what I generally would do is just get it very, very, very close so that it won't actually show up on a, uh, oops, make sure you do it straight though, not like that. perpendicular and what we can do is make this space so small and generally what I do is that that blue line which is the eaves line is either non-print uh, the wrong wrong place into the display it's this eave line here I would actually turn it off you can make it very fine uh, if you're using plot styles make it a very fine uh, non-print plot style and it will just disappear Let's have a quick look at that and see what it's done. Voila! Very, very easily the roof object underlaps, overlaps itself. Not a problem. Now, generally speaking, I have got one that uh, just the other day that did it to me, but generally speaking, you cannot get this eaves line to overlap itself, which doesn't make sense anyway for normal roof construction. You would generally only have one plane of roof. Uh, and there it is, the overlap 